And here we are. Jenny, why are you wait? Get over wait here. Over. Get over here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Jenny. Hello, I'm Paul. And we're Go Box Art Kite, and I know most of you know who we are yep. <laughs> at this point. We might sound a little different tonight um, because we took the regular microphones home. Yeah. And, and we're using a different one tonight. Forgot. So. We're using the old one. So if it's a little bit too quiet, let me know. I can we see can it's a little it. quieter than normal. Hi, Kim. So Good to see you on here. Let me know if you need it adjusted up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we uh, just were kind of in a hurry tonight and uh, ended up missing the mics. Didn't really want to turn around. And luckily, we have this one that we always used before. So there's our backup plan. Woo. Always have backups. <laughs> So let's show what we're doing tonight. Let's do it. Okay, let me see if I can find Hi, it. Hi, Joanna. Nice to see you on here. Whoop. There it is. I guess I could zoom Towering out Falls. So I was telling Paul earlier, I think this is going to be a painting that's not going to, just looking at it, I think it's not going to take a super long time, but probably the longest time will be spent here. For most um, of us who like to overthink this kind of thing. I that would be me. It could go either way, because I think also this area up here, Oh, Good. we've all done your clouds now. A yeah, this times, is actually so. easier clouds. So, <laughs> two weeks in a row. Yes, <laughs> I think that's awesome. Hopefully, you guys are having good weather in Newport. It probably is. It's so nice there in September usually. Yep, we. But they're starting going to start getting some showers along the coast tomorrow. Yeah, I'm super jealous of those like misty, like gloomy, but also cool nights that you're going to have. <laughs> How's the volume, guys? Is it all right? Do you need me to turn it up a little bit? I can turn it up. If it's all right, then we'll just leave it otherwise. <laughs> we can project. So did Noma Falls inspire this? Yeah, for sure. I mean, oh, Daniel did make it in. Oh, hey. Um, Seems to be a delay. Isn't there always a delay? Yeah, that's not much we can control. I um, love the gloomy days and nights. Yeah, um, I have seasonal affective disorder in the summer. It's really weird. I but it does I like exist. the beginning of summer when it's like June, and as soon as we get into July and August and even into September, I have seasonal affective disorder where I don't really love it when it's sunny. <laughs> I wouldn't say I get depressed, but I really want the the rain and gloomy. <laughs> And yes, I did. I actually have seen that that is a thing. And I just thought it was just me and Greta. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I'm i ready for fall. Yeah, volume is good. Okay, awesome. Good. Okay, so um, let's get at it. Let's get going. So I actually, I'm going to have to use my cheat sheet a little bit because it has been three months since I painted this. Daniel says, thought I was going to miss tonight's show, but... My get-together with friends turned into just a few of us, and we decided to reschedule. Yep, that goes that way sometimes. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to start out with is, obviously, this painting is pretty, it is actually pretty simple. Um, I intentionally made it simpler um, because we weren't more focusing necessarily on the painting being complicated, but we just wanted to lay down some basic foundation stuff, so... Uh, oh, Daniel gets sad in the summer too. Yeah. And then Kim says, "Sometimes I sometimes hope for rainy days here in Florida, but we always get sun every day." My daughter had sad in the winter in New Hampshire. Moving to Florida helped. Yeah, there's. I think most people have it in the winter. Yeah. All right. So what we're going to start out, with, we we'll go over the colors real quick, even though they're the same colors we use all the time now. But we got white and black, cyan, magenta, yellow, ochre, and yellow. Oh, process. Process yellow, process yellow. So mm -hmm. what we're going to start out with is we're going to use our biggest brush. So go ahead and get your brush, rinse it off, get a little bit of moisture on it so it's damp but not wet. And we're going to mix together white and a little bit of cyan. I want to mix pretty pale to start with. Very, very, very pale blue. About like so. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just go maybe a brush width or so above center. I'm going to add just a little bit more white down in this lower area. 
And I know I am really bad about getting the paint all the way around the corner. So leaving a little bit on the edges. So I'm yeah. going to try to make an effort to at least let it overlap just a smidge. <laughs> and what we can do is I'm just going to add a little bit more of this color. We're just going to move up about halfway towards the top of the canvas, and we can add just a little bit more of the cyan as we do that. I really love this cyan color. I do too. It's I used so it for, rich. Um, Paul and I are both putting some paintings in a local gallery where each have to put four paintings in. I think I might have talked about it before. And I used this color with raw umber as a shading for mm -hmm. the owls I've been painting, and it's so perfect for that. Are you so you're doing acrylics? For yeah, yours? I think you should do acrylics too because I don't think they'll dry in time. <laughs> yeah, they will. The oils? Yeah, I think so. Okay. We have a month. Yeah, but you haven't started. <laughs> yeah, but I paint fast. <laughs> you worry about you. I'll worry about me. We'll be good. It's right, so just a little extra cyan in here. It won't really matter because when we get going, we're going to be painting down over this anyway. I'm going to kind of soften this up. So to soften it, I'm just taking my brush very lightly and brushing back and forth across. Um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to wipe my brush off. I'm not going to worry about rinsing it because our next step is we're going to now paint our um, clouds in and to do that we're just going to take a little bit of our cyan a little bit of our magenta about equal parts maybe a little bit more cyan there we go just nice deep violet color I'm just going to brush this across the top edge first I tend to mix as I go whereas Jenny tends to make bigger batches and just roll with it and it's neither way is right and neither way is wrong so <laughs> my way is right <laughs> whatever works best for you uh yeah i filmed a a video that we'll post pretty soon it's a kids painting but it's super fun it's a little bat hanging from a tree it's super fun for all ages so that'll be posted pretty soon so i'm just going to kind of come kind of close to the two colors matching up jenny you went all the way it doesn't matter um because what we're going to do next is i'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush off now we're going to mix a really bright pink using our magenta and white Airplanes. Now Hayden and I have been seeing the hot air balloons every morning this week. Yeah, he's been work. posting pictures on his Instagram page. Yeah, and I think it's because it, they go out a little bit later because the sun's coming up a little bit later. Yeah. And so they go out about dawn. So That's cool. All right, so now I'm just going to take the pink. Will it be GoBox Live or the other channel? So that one is its actually just going to be an open one on YouTube. Yeah. Um, I am. I purposely did it for the Halloween season. A charter school that I work with every year liked it and wanted that for their art project. So I thought, you know, I'm just gonna post it on our regular YouTube channel for anyone to watch. Yeah, we're not ditching our original YouTube channel altogether. We just haven't put yeah, new content on it. And especially like I like putting kids' videos out there. At no, no charge. Hold on, real quick. But hold that thought. Okay. <laughs> don't worry too much about blending these two colors together you can kind of just let it be choppy I've got a lot of glare but like so but do make sure that it does feel like they transition a little bit anyway go ahead yeah I like um, having the kids videos on there you know some kids videos at no charge just because there's a lot of kids that you know there may be latchkey kids and they need something well, to do like we get a lot of kids from other parts of the world that watch yeah. our kids' videos. So. Oh, that's always a really cool thing. So we end up with a lot of viewers in other countries. UK. <clears throat> and in India. And yeah, we're 
sending them kits is not very practical. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm making, mixing this a little bit lighter now, just adding a little bit more white, and just gonna kind of dab this mm -hmm. in. We can always come back and and um, play around with this later because once it dries, we'll have more opportunity to add adjustments and stuff. But this part, really quick at the beginning, is just simple. Oh, you will have fun painting that one. In fact, the age group I made it for was uh, ages five and up, but a four-year-old could totally do it. They used to come and paint it in my studio class. I'll post a picture of it in our Facebook group page. I'll do that in a few minutes. So the other thing we can do is as we come down into our sky a bit, we can kind of just let this break up into the sky. So maybe I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that up close. What I'm doing, I got a big glob right there. But you can just kind of let it kind of break up in some areas. So we'll do the two areas we have over there. Nothing too fancy. We're not getting like, we're not, this painting's not about clouds, it's just back out. Giving us something a little bit more interesting than just blue <laughs> sky to look at. Add a little bit of extra pink going up. If you really like the pink, and I do, you can go up pretty high with it, but it's I think it's really important to leave a little bit of this violet kind of. Mm-hmm. Joanna, I like that idea. What's that? She says, uh, you should come to my classroom and do a painting. Like a artist in residence. Let's sort do of. it. <laughs> yeah. Road we trip. Should. We should totally do that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush off. And the next thing we're going to work on, and bring the original back in here, is we're going to basically just work on this foundation here. So a lot of times, like in a painting like this one, I'm going to zoom out a little further um, <clears throat> what we do is a lot of back painting and so getting a base color down here to work from is how we're going to do that to start with and uh, I'm gonna I'm cheating because again it's been three months since I painted this I need these little reminders <laughs> um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take I am still getting affected by that monster <laughs> Did I tell him what happened? Well, yeah, you can't just leave it hanging. I was like, so I went to play golf today, and a lot of times I like to have a Red Bull or a Monster before. Um, a Monster Energy Drink. Monster Energy Drink, because A, the sugar is actually, crazily enough, is actually helpful, um, but the caffeine's good. And I was getting really close to the course, and I had taken a pretty good-sized swig of Monster Energy Drink, and as soon as my mouth was full, my body said, Sneeze right now. <laughs> and so I literally like bombed my whole windshield and dashboard and steering wheel and legs, like everything. <laughs> and, and this was course, before you went golfing? This is before I got to the golf course. And of course, when you sneeze, you inhale. So I blew Monster Energy drink out my nose. It got down in my lungs. And here it's been... Did you choke forever? Oh my gosh, what time is it right now? It is almost 6. This was at like 12.15, and it's still like affecting me. Oh, I don't know if that stuff's healthy to have in your lungs. I don't. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I got to detail my truck this weekend. I'm just going to put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a pleasant experience, because then it also really like, it looked like I wet my pants. <laughs> well, then you could wet your pants if you want. Nobody mm -hmm. would know. <laughs> All the cool kids do sneeze. it. <laughs> if oh, Daniel says, oh, happy early birthday to Hayden. Hard to believe he's going to be 23 oh, right. and my nephew's going to be 22. Weren't we just that age like a month ago? Yes, we were. And Daniel, I think you were at Hayden's first birthday party, if I remember. I don't remember. I can't remember. It was at our that very first tiny house we had where you came and helped us move or something. Yeah, just a couple blocks away from <laughs> your house. Yes, tomorrow is Hayden's 23rd birthday. It's mm -hmm. amazing. 
All right. So 23 on the 23rd of 2023. Yep. Greta says it says golden birthday. It says golden birthday. <laughs> so let's go ahead and mix this color that we're going to make. We're going to take, I'm just going to take this bright pink that we just mixed. Uh, maybe I'll just mix it up here where we already had our kind of violet going. This is a little better. And we're going to add a little bit of yellow ochre to this. I maybe just added too much. I did. Let's add a little bit more blue. A little bit more magenta. There I'm we go. still working on my clouds. Well, don't overwork. I didn't hear what you said about colors that you're mixing together. Um, it's it's these three. Magenta. Oh, okay. But it's very little amount of yellow ochre. So are you used. aiming for a dark teal? You, just let me. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> and I'm just going to lighten this up a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, it is a little bit on the tealish side, and that's going to be good. It's a little bit too light, but we could add a little black into it. Is this too muted? No, it's fine. Okay. It's supposed to be. Okay. Give you look at the original look. It's oh, yeah. Actually, I really like that color. I like it with a little more blue in it. Yeah. So basically what I'm going to start out with is I'm just going to start just a little bit up into our water or sky. It's almost too dark. It's too dark. Let's lighten it up. Can we call yellow ochre honey mustard? <laughs> That's what Daniel said. Dijon. Joanna seconds that. Honey mustard. I used to call it butterscotch. So I like to do like, think of like, our waterfall is going to be right, right here. So that's going to be our lowest spot or so. And at first, what I want to do is just kind of bring it up like this. And then I'm going to paint this in. It ends up a little bit lighter for right now, but we can darken it up. It's almost too light, but we can darken it up. And actually, we will end up lightening and darkening, so it's no biggie. Whatever we end up with right now works. <laughs> <clears throat> and you can kind of like use a little bit of water to thin the paint down just a tiny bit. Just have your brush a little bit damper than you normally would. And I don't want to get going down too far because I want to really quickly add trees up at the top. Actually, no, let's go ahead and keep working this down. I'm looking at the instructions. <laughs> what we're going to do as we work down is we can, let's go down about two thirds of the way. And if you need to mix more color, mix more color. We're going to paint over this area a few times, so don't worry about it. This is just a foundation. It's like a primer. I did an online painting video last week. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, I just was uh, not feeling anything I was painting, and so... I picked one that I liked the painting and I'm like, I'm just going to sit through a, an online class and see how someone else does it. And uh, yeah, it was fun. It was very similar to how we teach, obviously. But not, only not, not quite as fun. <laughs> it's only one person. So, you know, there's no banter. But for people who like to, uh, you know, do something that feels kind of more of a class, I guess. There are options out there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to leave about the bottom two inches or so, and I'm just going to go right ahead into black. And again, use a little bit of a damp brush. You can even brush some water onto your canvas. <laughs> there were no dad jokes. <laughs> I watched a few about a year ago when I started doing these, and honestly, it was boring. The painting itself was really nice, but it was such an unhelpful, boring video. Yeah, I have found that. I've watched a few over the years, uh, partly also, yeah, just seeing how other people are doing it, if they're doing it the same way we are. and um, There are definitely some out there that don't have a lot of personality, and then they're kind of the star of their own show. The paintings are beautiful, but it's uh All right, so real quick, I'm going to rinse my brush off. There's no talking about movies from the 80s. No. 
no dad jokes. And I'm just gonna use a dry, uh, no, a slightly damp, but no paint on the brush to just feather this out up. I don't want to knock the other companies though. Like some of them are really talented. And some of them are not. So. <laughs> You're so mean. I'm running out of paint. <laughs> oh wow what kim says she just heard on the news tonight that a bob ross painting was being sold for 10 million dollars it's crazy yeah no random friends in the chat bringing up things that are inside jokes either <laughs> right <laughs> oh and daniel says great sound effect there paul sounded like a plane <laughs> there really was a plane there yes. really was a plane Or was it a bad burrito? I don't know. <laughs> Remember we used to tell the kids that when like we would watch movies and somebody would die, we'd be like, he must have had a bad burrito. Yes. That is what we did 100%. Like, Why did he fall down like that? Must have been that bad burrito he that's had. That's so funny. I totally forgot about that. That was mainly with Hayden. <laughs> yeah. Because he would get really upset watching like Wally -E when yeah. like some of the robots he got really attached to in that movie were bad guys. And they end up, you know, not in great situations, I guess, because of karma. And he didn't like that. So, we, oh, he just, he had a bad burrito. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I totally forgot about that. <laughs> All right. So I'm mixing up a color that's a little bit darker than what we did our initial hillside. A little bit more blue cyan to it. And I'm going to, we're going to switch and use our number eight brushes. And I'm going to zoom in. Oh, it was his first painting on TV. That's so cool. A walk in the woods. I'm going to have to look that up. All right. So zoomed in using number eight. I'm just going to start creating this little hillside. And what I'm going to do is now this color is vastly different than what we put on the hillside to begin with. So what you're going to want to do is as you work your way across and you do a little bit, Kind of blend it out into the other color. Jenny, uh, Je Greta, there's a monster in there. Oh, there is. But it's it's on the right top side. It's uh one of the non full sugar ones. Bring me that one that you just opened. I think she just brought one. keep all kinds of good beverages in my fridge for my employee. Yeah. And me. And Hayden. And apparently Greta. And Jenny. <laughs> so I'm just making sure. I'm not putting I a lot of... I am behind. <laughs> you're busy talking. No, I've been painting the whole time. So I'm just making sure... That's just the ridge you're painting, right? Yes, it's yeah. the tree line up top. Ooh, orange dream sickle. Let me have a taste of that. <laughs> Before I didn't even know this was a thing. When did you buy this? The other a couple days ago, and then I looked, and it has sucralose Ooh, in it. You're gonna like that one. It yeah. tastes like something from my childhood, but I can't quite place it. Cream sickle? No, a little bit, but there's some. I don't know. Oh, it matches her hair. Their hair. Yeah, so let me zoom out and you can see. I'm just trying to blend this in a little bit. And I'm not trying really hard to make it look like trees. You know, the, the, there's a time and a place. This is neither of those things. This is just a suggestion. And this is kind of like, this is part of the series. I mean, uh, my idea for the summer series was really getting focus on how to do certain landscape elements and this one was building how heights. does it taste like disappointment <laughs> <laughs> what was that from honestly daniel 
the aftertaste of that, and I didn't want to say it because then Gretel will stop drinking it, maybe. It, maybe not. I don't know. It reminded me of these vitamin C tablets. <laughs> Grandma used to make me think. Hey, I, do those big giant ones? Mm hmm Yeah. I think we all took them. It's just, it's the aftertaste of it. It's not the initial taste. The initial taste is very creamsicle. Did that ruin it for you? You know what that taste is. It's the taste of sucralose. Oh, she likes that. They like that. Okay, cool. <laughs> what colors did you mix here? It's just a darker, just added more blue to our sky. So, I mean, like, our, does this look okay? Yeah, our ridge color. Oh, an old lady. <laughs> Whose palette? Daniel sees another face in the palette. An old lady with long hair. Oh, I see it. It must be this one. Is this like a braid or a long piece of hair? That's... Here's her yeah. mouth and here's her eyes. She's a Bob Ross hairdo with a rat tail. We'll make her into an <laughs> alien. She's got a great face. Yeah, it kind of looks sad too. Oh, you better give her a smile. Here, I'll do it. Horns. <laughs> now we can always come back and darken this up. <laughs> no, that's her hair pull. <laughs> if we want to. Um, Kim, we wanted to ask how Mark is doing. Yeah, how's his wrist? How are you doing, Mark? <laughs> maybe he can't type, so maybe Kim has to answer for him. <laughs> Still on painkillers? <laughs> I did the most awesome painting on painkillers when I had my tonsils out. And then I had to, uh, I added it to our studio. And I had to teach it, I don't know, how many times do you think I taught Broadway Stroll? Too many. So many times it sold out every single time people loved that painting. And I was like, I don't even know what I did here. <laughs> I'm just trying to recreate it. And it was super complicated. And finally I ended up, after teaching it, at least a hundred times. It had to be at least a hundred times. And not just me. It wasn't just like some of the night instructors that... taught it too. I finally just removed it from our menu and like it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> it went into the back rooms, the archives. We had a, a an error with our booking system once and it booked two full classes worth for the same night at the same time. Yeah. We rented a space down the street so we could serve everybody. That yeah, was... we rented a old fire station it was really cool it was kind of stressful but at first but once we got that sorted out it was super cool oh we went back to work on wednesday no more pain pills he thinks he's getting the cast off next week two weeks after pins and plates <laughs> i say he'll get another one <laughs> you're welcome for asking and yes uh, joanne i'll have to show that painting sometime it was um there's an artist that's, I think he's Russian. His name's Leonid Afromov. And I was super inspired by his paintings. And if you look him up. There's some weird stuff going on. With his. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. But his anyway, estate. you can see. I know you guys would recognize his work because there's like Fine Art America sells prints of it. And I just see, like, they probably sell it, prints of it in Target. <laughs> he passed away in 2019, I think. Mm hmm. And like now, like his estate is selling the originals for like literally like seventy bucks. I thought that was a scam. It is, but it isn't. Weird. Like it's legit, but it's weird. Like I see it advertised on Twitter all the time, and it's like. <laughs> but but the originals, there are a lot of them. They're incomplete. <laughs> I'll type his name so you guys know how to spell it. Let's. See. There we go. Now, if you guys need to use a slightly smaller brush for this at any time, by all means, don't feel like you have to use the number eight. Number four might be better for you. What I would be cautious of, though, is relying too heavily on using, like, the smallest brush or even the number four when we're doing something that's in the distance like this because a lot of times people will want to, the smaller the brush, the more detail people want to put in. And we don't want to make this part feel like a detailed element. We want it to exist. It wants to be a suggestion. But when you guys are doing a serious painting, do you talk? 
like serious, man. like when <laughs> when where we're just by ourselves or you know i think we're always goofy um well i mean if i'm working like we don't actually paint together if we're working on something like if i were when i work on my paintings for the show Mm -hmm. I probably won't we just be. send each other progress pictures. Yeah, I probably won't be in the same room. What do you think I should add in the foreground? <laughs> That's what I always get from you. Should I add something in the foreground? <laughs> yeah, the creative process is different because it usually it, it involves uh, earbuds. Uh, uh, more isolation. Like for me, I work better if I'm not distracted by other stuff. I actually do a lot of my paintings at work, but I don't get a lot of distractions at Okay, so I finished my um, December painting, and I actually kind of love it. It's not a typical thing you would see from me. Like, yes and no. It's got a little bit of a whimsical feel, but it's a like a holiday cabin in the dark. The warm glow of the lights shining out on the snow, and it has the moon, of course, snowflakes falling on one side. Um, but... I wanted to say real quick, Jen Welton, I know you watch these videos, usually not live, but I know you'll, you will watch this video soon, and you had requested a nutcracker, so I am going to do a nutcracker as a side project um, outside of the box, so you guys can keep that in mind. Maybe I will we try should to do, do a maybe lot. Maybe we should do, literally call all those paintings outside the box. <laughs> yeah, outside the box. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to take a little my biggest brush now and take a little bit of this leftover color and just kind of use it to kind of fuzz this out a bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> when are you developing a new painting for this? For, for which? For Go Box. No, we don't work together when we're doing that. <laughs> for Go Box? Yeah. yeah. We used to, when we had the studios, we used to go in and set up. Um, Paint side by side with wine. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, I asked because I also take painting lessons in town, and I was told yesterday that I shouldn't be talking. <laughs> there was another lady next to me who started talking to me. I felt like a little kid. Oh, uh, so yeah, there's like diff different angles, because if you're doing like a, more like a artist workshop, it'd probably be frowned upon, but if you're doing more of a social type of thing, then that probably wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to stop myself from talking. I think that would be hard, because there's just always something funny to say, You'd or something to, person. something to remark on. Yeah. I mean, we talked in... But College I also know that when we classes. first started, you know, doing Go Box, some of the people didn't like that we talked. Just a couple of people. And they, yeah, but we they got quit. it. We got <laughs> they it a few quit times and went away. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, it was definitely something that people either like it or they don't. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna mix up a little bit of our sky blue again. I'm gonna come to this lowest spot. Let me just look at something real quick. I um like to start my waterfall just below my tree line so it doesn't look like um, it's just coming out of the sky. And I'm gonna turn my brush on edge and actually all I'm doing right now is just sketching this in because I don't even know why I'm putting this much effort into it because I'm going to take my brush now and just kind of scribble this out. I am still not caught up. I'm getting there. Am I painting too fast? Yes. You are. Way too fast. Uh, let's see. I've been hooked on using an AI picture creator for ideas for paintings. That's a really great idea, Daniel. Yeah, he I was sending me some that. today. And one thing I do, Daniel, that you can do as well, is you can go on to... Uh, like unsplash upsplash i think it's called unsplash and it's a um website with free photography there's another pixels is another pixels. one pixels yeah and uh you can look up 
photographs. Like, let's say I needed to paint a, a, to a ugh, anatomically correct tiger. I could find a picture of a tiger, and if I wanted to, I could just paint it exactly as it okay. looks. So here's the rule on all of it, and this is something that I think is important to put out there. If you want to find your favorite artist and copy his painting or her painting, do it. There's no law against it. The only law becomes if you try to pass sell it off it. as your mm -hmm. own or if you try to sell it. Mm -hmm. But if you're just doing it for your own practice to learn how this person paints. Those sites like Pexels, though, they're, you're free to use any of it. Yeah, but like I'm just saying like if somebody wanted to do, copy a um, Andy Warhol or something like that, you can do that. Just don't try to pass it off as your own. Yeah. And then it's no big deal. And a lot of people like, get really weirded out about, like, oh, if I'm just copying. But when we were in art class, our teachers encouraged us to copy great masters yeah. or other artists. I hated that, but then as I got older, I realized why he did it, and it made much more sense. Because, you know, yeah. when you're young and you're an artist and you're just starting out, you're like, I want to be creative. But then you realize... I'm just copying Bob you know, Ross No, I just anyway. copied no. Van Gogh's Starry Night, and then I went off and did another painting of my own using that style, and it was amazing. You do learn a lot. Is this supposed to be like mist? Yeah, so this is, we're just creating the mist from, that's why we painted the waterfall yeah. area in first, and then we're just kind of fluffing out from there. Fluffing. And we, we'll do more mist, because we can even take a little bit more down here at the base. Now this is- <laughs> Not this talking is, during a lesson? Is this 1950? <laughs> right. But you can take this and really break it up. Kim, you need to bring a bottle of wine in there or a really flask with up. some stuff in it and then stir things up. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Get those artists talking. I don't know. <laughs> They're a serious class. It's serious. You know, there's a studio in Sherwood that's like that too. Reach their own. I mean, some. It's, you can also like. I think Michaels has classes like that. Oh my gosh! I took cake decorating classes through them, and they were so boring. I learned a bit, but they were. It almost wasn't worth it. <laughs> it was so like I dreaded going. All right, so I'm gonna leave that for just a second. I want to bring a little bit more white into our sky up here. So I'm gonna take my number four. <laughs> I'll take my pot. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And I'm just going to take a little bit of white. I'm going to zoom in here a bit. Yop. You know, we, Kim, we call that puff and paint. <laughs> we talked about it. Yeah, they were. that was a thing in Portland for a while. And I think maybe they just ended up with unfinished paintings. <laughs> but man, fun. Um, so I'm just taking pure white, and I'm trying to think of this very horizontally, but working it in around our trees. It doesn't seem, I'm gonna see if I can tilt this. It doesn't seem like it does much, but it really does a lot. And I think this is something that gets missed. Is this your sun? It's not really sun, but it's light. Okay. You know, um, sometimes up at Multnomah Falls, you have this. Yeah. So this is something I feel like gets missed in a lot of, um, Landscape paintings is the getting framing. this really harsh Wouldn't contrast. Wouldn't you want to do this before you paint the trees on? Nope. Huh. Because what you can do is it can actually become, you know how like when trees and stuff are backlit, they get fuzzy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can kind of let that play to your advantage. And what I do is I start, as I start working my way up with this color, I just let it break up. Mm -hmm. And when I say let it break up, I mean I'm just going to let it, do less and less brushwork so it becomes kind of patchy and uneven. Ah, Kim says, uh, I'm doing a large mural, and when that is complete, I'll be leaving her studio. I've been going for two years, and it's not fun anymore. Yeah, that's a bummer. Uh, oh, Daniel says, is that kind of like alpine glowish? Sure. <laughs> What's alpine glowish? Whatever you want it to be. Okay. <laughs> Daniel has learned way more. <laughs> oh, from Paul and Jenny. Thank you. I really love to hear that. So when I zoom out, 
I'm trying to be humble right now. And I tilt it so we don't have the glare. You can see this little bit of extra contrast right there really becomes a big, it helps draw the eye in there. And it's subtle, but I see so often when I see people do landscapes, they forget to do just that little bit of bright contrast. I, I think that's probably the number one thing I see in, in that gets missed in um, beginner's painting mm -hmm. is contrast. We get too yeah. stuck up on color. Mm. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and let me just make sure. Again, checking, our, checking where we at. So everybody's posting their... Um, we said yes to the homecoming dance. <laughs> uh, it's that time of year. Now, if you were feeling like really tricky, you could take just a tiny bit of white <laughs> and <laughs> Mark says the pink looks like a Rolling Stone tongue logo. Right there. Oh, it does, totally. Yes. I can make that happen. Anyway, I've just got just the tiniest little bit of white on my number four. And I'm just pulling some streaks. <laughs> you don't have to do this. This is optional. Just adding a little bit of some... <laughs> some rays. Alpen glue. German. Uh, I can't pronounce that. Alpen glugen. Alpen glugen. Lit. Alps glow. It's an optical phenomenon that appears as a horizontal reddish glow near the horizon opposite to the sun, where the solar disk is just below the horizon. That's way too scientific for me. <laughs> you know, there's so many things that we, that you can observe, and it's like. I know exactly what what Daniel's talking about with the Alpen Glow and Alpen Glugen. It sounds like it would be a soap brand. That's just because you don't appreciate the German language. <laughs> um, but, you know, I've noticed that, like, when the sun's going down in the west, sometimes there is a, yellow, a pinkish glow on the horizon to the east, mm -hmm. which doesn't make sense. But it's a refraction of the way the light's refracting as it cuts through the, the atmosphere and stuff. All right. So next step, I'm going to switch back to my number eight. I'm going to start to rough in where our water comes through. Let me grab the original. So I'm just going to start building in this little bit of lighter color here. I'm going to start initially, let's use that kind of bluish reflection color, or not reflection, but mist color. And I'm just going to start right about, maybe about three inches from the bottom of the canvas. You can, you can go down a little further if you want. And I'm just, at first, I'm just going to scribble. Let me zoom in. Let me move this. Let me do this. Let me do that. Here. Here. <laughs> We're going to put it over here, see? <laughs> oh my gosh, here comes that transatlantic accent again. Well, Jimmy Stewart. Over there. Well, I can put a tree over here. And there's clouds. There's clouds in the sky. I think we talked about how we didn't really like um, that movie with Jimmy no, Stewart. No, but you know what? I want to watch it again. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Fred and I didn't like it at all. But like, that guy's rude. <laughs> there's something about it that I feel like I need to watch it again because I feel okay. like I missed something. There's some parts of it that are funny, and I can see why people, you know, go back to it. But he was kind of a jerk. Well, he was, and that's the whole point. <laughs> that's the whole point. But of I don't it. know that did he ever end up like being redeeming himself? Yeah. The one I want to see this year is... Uh, Miracle on 34th? No. The one with... Um, what was it called? Krampus? No. Do you remember what it's called, Greta? Violet, Violet Night. Oh, with David Harbour? <laughs> yeah. It's a comedy. Okay. I need another truly. David Harbour from Stranger Things. Oh, here. This one's open. Maybe we can share it. There's another one in there. I can go get another one. Whatever. Up to you. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, I got 
got some text to catch up to. When Mount Hood is glowing, it is the most beautiful thing in Oregon. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't appreciate it either, Jenny. Yes, AI is free. Mark showed me how to use it for painting. It's, it's awesome. There was actually just a court ruling that it cannot be copyrighted. Now there's a Juan Moreau face on the canvas with blue and black eye and the Rolling Stones mouth. Ah, okay. Yes, you're right. I do see that. I absolutely see it. There's the eye and some hair. A seal in the blue or Sean Connery if he was a seal. I'm missing the whole point of it's a wonderful life. That wouldn't be surprising for me to miss the point. Let's see. Mix this up. The sun rays are not totally exactly not the easiest thing. Yeah, you don't have to do them. And one thing I found, mine, even though I use very little paint, it turned out a little harsh. Yeah, but and that's so easy to fix. What I did is I got a brush really wet, and I'm just using the wet brush to kind of spread the paint out, and now it looks kind of misty, foggy, and way better. It also kind of looks like teeth at the top of the hill there, <laughs> or a mustache. Oh wait, what are we doing down here on the water? Stormtrooper's helmet now. Yeah, I would love to see your interpretations on a Rorschach test, too. I don't know if I do. <laughs> All right, so let's do our waterfall. I'm going to use my number four. Did you see cyan and white down here? Yeah. You are distracted. <laughs> The Distracted Painter. There we go. That's our new channel. The Distracted Painter. So I'm going to use my pinky along the edge of the canvas to kind of keep myself fairly... You always make that, like, this little zigzaggy of water, a little meandering stream. You make it look so easy because it just, for you, it comes super natural. You just scribble. Scribble side to side. Yeah, I scribble side to side and mine doesn't look, like, as natural as yours. So I just use my pinky to kind of go along the edge of the canvas, and then I can kind of create a fairly parallel line, which is going to be fairly horizontal. I let it break up. Uh, and then I'm just going to take a little bit of white, just a little bit, not that much. And I'm just swirling and lifting and pulling away from the base. And you, you did your waterfall in white? Yep, just pure white. Wow, we're like just coming up on 50 minutes. Yeah, I felt like you're going kind of like turbo through this. Well, you wanted me to be done early tonight. No, just... no, I actually didn't. We, I thought we were going to have to try to be done by 8 oh, to that's pick right. up our dog's prescription. But we well, managed to get it. we've got more to do. We managed to get it on the way here. Yeah, so we don't have to be done by 8. and We'll be done by 8 anyway. He just didn't like the idea of rushing. This is a long, narrow fall. You know, there's one, I think, at Silver Creek Falls that's kind of like this, too. I mean, there's so many waterfalls. Actually, I'm going to look it up how many waterfalls are in Oregon. We can talk about waterfalls. Yeah, uh, there's this really beautiful park called Silver Creek Falls, and it's, like, east of Salem. Would you say that? Northeast of Salem? 
Uh, it's due east, pretty much. Yeah. And there's a, I think, an eight-mile hike you can take, and you you see so many waterfalls. And there's one that you get to walk behind. It's just pouring over your head. <clears throat> it's super cool. It's a little scary. It's super cool. <laughs> How many waterfalls are in Oregon? 238. Wow. Yeah. Is that more than the average state? <laughs> well, yeah. obviously, like a... Flatter state isn't going to have too many. I think one of the states, I had looked this up at one point in time, and one of the states, like Iowa or something, had three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a lot. Which state has the uh, most waterfall? I called it the correct name for the park. What do other people call it? Silver Falls? Do they maybe call it Silver Falls? Oh! Okay, I see. I just I needed to read the okay. next sentence down. Yes, I've always known it as Silver Creek Falls. I was wrong. Washington has more, but it's really close. Daniel, there's a horror movie that's called like what was it called? Murder in Silver Falls or something? And Paul and I were like, okay, this is based in Oregon. We have to watch it, and it was so dumb. Oh yeah, it was awful. But I highly recommend watching it. <laughs> It's always fun. Because <laughs> it's Oregon. All right, so what we're going to do next is, if we look at this original painting, what we can see is that there's very subtly some trees down in here. And we're going to do those trees next. And actually, we're going to use the same color that we did up here. <laughs> and we can actually add a couple of... Um, uh, add some detail to a couple of these trees. So I'm going to take uh, a little bit of blue, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of our honey mustard. Yay, honey mustard. And I want to make sure it's not too dark. That's too light. And let's just test it. A little too blue. What color are you aiming for? The same oh. color we used up here. Okay. Yeah, that, that color's not exactly the easiest to mix. Mine ended up being darker than what's below it, but... I that should be. I'm, That's what, okay, yeah, good. It should okay, be. good. So but I'm it just, is blended out, so I think it's okay. Yeah, I'm just going to take... I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. Are you touching up trees? I'm just adding... Taking a couple of the bigger ones and just very... I get this paint, this brush is really crooked, but it's got a really nice fine tip. And I'm just going. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is so crooked. Add just a little bit of some squiggle. Squiggle it just a little bit. How do you like that? That was good. <laughs> that was a total pole thing. That was you. You channeled me for a mm -hmm. second there. I did. Don't get too worried about details on this, and don't get too big. We don't want to get too big because then it makes the waterfall. That's actually almost too big, but I'm going to live with it. And I'm only going to do like maybe three or four. It's the uh... end of the world as we know it. Yeah. No, it's the redwood tree. <laughs> Could be. So I'm just going to add a couple. I'm going to, like, this is kind of a little bit janky looking right here, so let's go ahead and make one of those a little bit taller. Don't have to do a lot. Here's another one. It's a little bit wonky. Paul got hooked on um, Unsolved Mysteries the other day, oh, and kind he, of. like, blasted through a bunch of seasons. Yeah, but you know what? I've decided I don't like Unsolved Mysteries. You know why? Because they're not solved. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's so, like, it everything's so unresolved, open and I'm like, I want, I want closure on this. And Sometimes... All you're doing is just teasing me. So most of those um, crimes have podcast episodes about them, just different podcasters, and they'll always come back and 
do a report on if it was solved and that is such a good thing to listen to it that it, it just feels so good knowing you know dna caught this guy 60 years later because his fifth cousin put their uh, dna through 23 and me all right so that's all i'm going to do up at the top here And I also feel like a lot of some of them feel like the family members are just doing it for attention. Really? Yeah, I do kind of get that like sense. Like the interview? I don't know. I know some of them don't really want to be bothered. Like, podcasts will reach out to them all the time. Hard to say. All right. Oh! <laughs> what? Daniel. One of my favorite talents is my ability to do Robert Stack's voice. Oddly enough, it doesn't impress <laughs> women. Can you do Robert Stack from the airplane movie? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to mix up that same theme color we just oh, used. Oh, yeah, that theme song does. is It's the same song now. Uh, I'm mixing up the same color that we used up here, just adding a little tiny bit of black to it. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use our number four now. And let's zoom in here. So you use the same color, you added a little more black. Just a little, I just, yeah, just a little bit of black. So I just want it to be a little bit darker than this background. Just enough that you can see it, but not dark. So that's too dark. Mm. So still kind of foggy. Yeah. Let's see the original. Why don't you put it up there? We can yeah. see how light we need to make it. Okay. Just. Yeah, mine's too dark. I guess just add a little white to it. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna do. That makes a nice color. This one I'll probably end up just putting an, another tree over it because it's a little bit too dark. But. Or use. Actually, that works. So I'm just gonna kind of basically do really similar. So what we did up above, just using a little bit bigger brush. The brush is just moving side to side. It's not anything real specific or detailed as far as doing trees is concerned. So my mom and I used to watch, uh, at night we'd watch uh, Unsolved Mysteries, and then there was another show called Rescue 911, and I'm curious if any of you guys remember that. Um, Paul doesn't remember it. but I remember hearing it, but I don't think I ever watched it. That one detailed, like, emergency situations where, like, it'll talk about, oh, this kid got struck by lightning and taken to the hospital. And those ones, though... Every, I think if I remember right, everyone survives, so it's kind of like a survival story. Which well, is... that's no fun. <laughs> you just said you don't like the unsolved mysteries. Well, I mean, resolution would be finding their body and then finding the killer. <laughs> was it William Shatner that did that? Yeah, I think so. On Rescue 911. Yep. All right, so these trees are supposed to be just really subtle. So that's why the detail on them are not super important. So if you need to mm -hmm. add a little bit of water to soften them up. Yeah, Kim doesn't remember that either. Maybe it's just one season. I don't know. Daniel remembers everything, so he'll know. <laughs> he remembers everything except for whether or not he was at Hayden's. I don't think he was. His birthday. <laughs> I don't think he was. Because I think his nephew was being busy being born that day. <laughs> yeah, actually, you're right. That would have put that a damper on things. Thing. I remember I made the cutest lion cake for Hayden. And I was like, I'm going to fill it. Instead of buttercream in between the layers, I'm going to put chocolate ganache. And then I put the cake in the fridge, which I learned after working in a bakery, you really don't have to do if you're serving it the next day. I guess it depends on what's in it. But uh, 
the ganache hardened up so much that it couldn't even cut through the cake. <laughs> I had forgotten about that. All right, so I'm not going to do any more of those for right now. What we're going to do next, let me just see where we're at, make sure we're in the right spot. We are. Oh, it went for yeah. nine seasons. Wow. All right, <laughs> pure black. 89 through 96. I don't think I watched it that long. In 96, I was dating or marrying you. <laughs> yeah, we got married in 96. So, All right, so I'm just going to take a little bit of pure black now and just kind of Scary. brush this in. I'm going to do this on both sides, just this little mound comes out into the water, kind of cuts across the base of our trees. And then what we're going to do with this, you can kind of scrub this down into your water areas. I don't want this to be super harsh though, so I'm going to take my number eight brush, rinse it off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this black and just do like a little scrubby little cotton ball. Do another one here. Another one here. And this is all kind of just cutting across our background trees. And let's do kind of a bigger one right here. This doesn't have to be really solid. It, you know, actually softer is better. This can come up pretty high. And this is basically building our shadows for our golden colored trees. And do the same thing. Do kind of a golden little tree right here. And let's do another one right here. Another little one over here. You're just using black? Yep. And I'm just kind of trying to soften the edges up so it's not so harsh. <laughs> In 96, I was a big goober. <laughs> I had 0.0, .0 chance of getting married. <laughs> There's someone for everyone, Daniel, even goobers. <laughs> or so they say. Yeah, you know, my brother is 50 and he's single. I think he's going to be chronically single, but I think it's not related to girls not liking him. I think he's... He's picky. He's picky, and, you know, he's very established, and he makes decent money, and he gets suspended on himself, and I think that he's good with that. <laughs> at least, I think that's where it is at this point. When he was younger, he definitely wanted someone. Maybe, maybe someday that will something will happen. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> you know, I need a little bit more magenta. There we go. Blop, blop. I'm all crooked on the camera. Now, if at any point, since I just put fresh magenta on my palette, we can talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. What are we talking about? Um, you can take your number eight, get it nice and clean, and you can take a little bit of this pure magenta and kind of add it into your sky if you want to. Ooh. I have a pot question for you. Do folks get medical marijuana cards or are they not needed? We pay $667 a year for the doc appointments and license. Well, in Oregon, it's here it's fully legal for recreational use. So you, you could be using it for medical use, but you could go and just get it. No. I don't know how that works as far as like if you get a prescription. 
Yeah. Maybe I, don't, I wonder. It might be cheaper to just go into a dispensary. I don't know. It's probably not legal in Florida yet, though, right? I don't know. Slowly making its way. <laughs> I guess I'm doing that off camera. Um... Anyway, if you wanted to add a little bit of extra magenta, I still think adding a little bit of white helps. I think the magenta on its own just doesn't work for me. I think I have too much paint on my brush. My edges of these little hills are ending up too crisp. Yours are not. Soften them. That's what I'm doing. Soften them. <laughs> I posted a picture on the uh, Facebook page for the bat painting, and then I just went back and looked at it, and I realized it was the picture that was like the second to the last finishing. So it doesn't have all the finishing touches, like the highlights and the eyes. <laughs> I have to take a picture at home and replace it. If you want to take <laughs> a picture, <laughs> we went to a crazy rock and roll concert this week. Yeah. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. We took Greta and two of their friends up to Washington and saw a, it was called Freaks on Parade, I think. And it was Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, Filter, and Ministry. In reverse order. Yeah, Rob Zombie was, was Rob Zombie Fil and Alice Cooper Filter were like the, first. the headliners. Then Ministry, then Alice Cooper, then Rob Zombie. And it was good. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. If you like loud theatrical productions, loud rock me metal music with crazy theatrical production, that would be the show for you. Yeah, we bought the tickets for Greta's birthday back in April. And then by the time it came up, we were like, ugh, I don't really want to go. It's like on a work night and school night and... Um, you know, we weren't looking forward to the rush hour drive up there. But then we were so glad. So much like, fun. We had so much fun, yeah. It was not so much that we didn't want to go to the concert. We just didn't want to deal like, with all the stuff. Because it was an hour and a half drive to get there after work. Yeah. And then we didn't get home till 1230. <laughs> it took longer to get out of the parking lot than it did to get home. Yeah, the parking lot's a mess. <clears throat> all right, so... What we're going to do oh, next... voting on recreational in 2024. There you go. I bet it'll pass. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to mix a little bit of our magenta and a little bit of yellow ochre. Yes. Uh, Joanna and Oregon drugs are decriminalized. They thought... To some extent. Yeah. They thought uh, doing that would... It has to do with how the amount you have. Yeah, there's mixed feelings on it for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think mushrooms are legal now. So, anyway. Um, okay, so we just kind of mixed up like a little bit of an amber color using magenta. What are we doing with that? Are we sorry on those trees already? Yeah, just going to kind of start <laughs> blotting some of this color on. Pop. And we'll build this. We'll build this up a bit. So these mounds that we did, if you had, like Jenny did, where they were too harsh, this is your chance to soften them by layering this color. Yeah, the Rob Zombie part was, he does, he's an artist. He does, has always done. I didn't know that he's actually can paint and draw and all paint. that. Yeah, in Sculpt. fact, I remember when he first came out, he was did like a live painting thing on Headbanger's Ball. Oh, that's funny. And uh, huh. anyway, but he also directs horror movies. And so once the show started, you would remember, oh, that's right. He's a visual artist as well. So we got like a whole show on the projector screen and brought out like big characters in costume that were like super tall like 10 foot tall robots yeah, some of those were like close to 20 yeah feet. they had to be yeah they were huge 
So it was, it was an impressive uh, display. And uh, he's very, um, he's very interactive with the audience. Like, talks a lot about like different things. And that was kind of nice, rather than just going out and like performing and being done. <laughs> he has a very interesting, quirky personality. Like Alice Cooper goes. <laughs> Who what? Alice Cooper. He just basically said. Something about Portland, which is so funny because it's in Washington, but I guess the closest. But that's big what city. Rob Zombie said. Too. Yeah, I noticed that. It's but, a Portland show, as far as they're concerned. Yeah. It's in a suburb of Portland. So. Rob Zombie had some real interesting stuff to say about Portland. That was pretty funny. <laughs> it's like I don't know whether to be embarrassed right now or what. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head there, buddy. <laughs> we have a bit of a homeless problem in Portland. <laughs> Yeah, that's what he finished it off. He with. finished he it off. He's party. like, clearly, you guys are ready to party. <laughs> but uh, he, you know, he lives a real clean life. He's like vegan and <laughs> doesn't do drugs and alcohol and all that at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. It's always surprising when you you get a musician who's in the metal side of things, and he's like totally clean. That's why he could perform. Like really I think Trent cleanly. Reznor is too, isn't he? I don't know, probably. Like his performance was really, you know, unmuddled. Yeah. <laughs> if you're into that. My parents pointed out to me that they're not really into that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, well you know, at like eighty years old, we wouldn't expect you to be. <laughs> No, it's funny because I took videos and then I started watching the videos and I saw some of the things that were being projected on the screens behind and I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't need to get shared. It was just like clips from some of Rob's horror movies, I think. And a specific alien anatomy. I didn't know that these were going to end up being trees. You should have told us. Why? I don't I want you to. shaped them different. I didn't want you to think of it being trees. I just want them to be <laughs> shapes. All right, so we're going to leave those. We're going to come back. We're going to add some more brightness to them. Um, we're actually getting pretty close to done on this. We've got maybe 20 minutes left or so. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to do two larger foreground trees. Oh, basalt cliffs, yeah. I mean, they could be. Bas Beacon Rock. Yeah, we could do. Oh, is, yeah, is I could Beacon see that. Rock a basalt cliff? Yeah, the whole huh. gorges, basically. Interesting. So I'm using a little bit of black to kind of come in and kind of create so that these are more like the edges of the shrubs. Oh, are they shrubs or trees? Trees, whatever you want to call them. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, what made you decide to do the black shapes first? Because you don't normally do that. Uh, actually, I usually do. Do you? Yeah, if I'm doing something like this. Because I want that depth behind Of the black it. behind it. So you're just mm -hmm. tinting the canvas, basically. Yeah, because if you just painted this color on the top, it would be very thin and weak. Mm -hmm. Like it wouldn't have the substance, but if you paint it over the black, then it's got some depth of it, mm. depth to it. All right, so let's do a couple of bigger trees. Um, you can always come back, like if, like we, we might end up covering this tree here. If you want to move, do another one and move it over, um, you can. Um, but I am just going to use my number eight. And I'm going to start, I actually want this one to be just hug the side real close. And it's not going to come up real high, but just plain black. Just kind of start, let me zoom in. Just start with kind of a little bit of a vertical little shape. And I'm just using the edge of my number eight here. And one of the things you have to be really careful of is not going too broad. Because all of a sudden, if you go at like an angle like this, a lot of people do it. And then all of a sudden, you've covered everything. Mm -hmm. And so I always try to 
keep them narrower than you think they need to be. Yeah, because that's the, when you get them too wide at the top, you have to commit to that. <laughs> yeah, and what I see a lot of people do is they start going down and then they realize that it's getting too fat too fast and then they just go straight down. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah, you've seen it. So start a little narrower than you think is going to be right, and then work your way down. You can always go back and add more tree boughs. You can always make them bigger. Be pretty loose with this. I think. Are people, you using just pluck? Yep. I think people get a little bit too tight when they're doing this. But I'm just going to leave that other tree. It's fine. I'm not going to worry about adding them another one you can see a little hint of it back there but when i zoom out you can see it it leans a little bit they always do um I'm just kind of scrub it out but i think it's also like really important to just kind of bring it all the way down into the shadows now this other side we're gonna have to um I'm going to start with a little bit smaller of a brush because I want to get up into our sky. I always think it's really important to get one tree that's in the foreground that cuts all the way across everything in the background up into the sky a little bit. It mm. adds that extra little bit of depth. And I think a lot of times people come short and then it feels makes the whole painting feel kind of segmented. And by cutting across, it, it kind of brings everything together and makes everything feel like they all belong together. So I'm gonna use my number four to start. You can use your smallest brush if you want to. And you'll notice I don't do a trunk when I do this. Sometimes, uh, like if, if I, you look at this original one, I did go back in and put a trunk in in some of the gaps. Yeah. Um, but I, the trunk to me, what I've found in teaching people is it does weird things to your brain? Our brain. Yeah, it makes us want to attach the branches to the trunk and rather than thinking about the tree as an overall mass. So I'm going to start really close in, maybe about an inch in from the edge, maybe about an inch above my horizon. Can we see how much paint you have on your brush? Just hold your hand under it. Okay. Very little. Okay. I can zoom in. Venice, your tree looks a lot softer than mine, and I think it's maybe the amount of paint you have. And then you're just, fraying on your brush. <laughs> just enough to put paint on the canvas. So maybe I'll zoom in so you can see this beginning part. I have to move my palette. Move it, palette. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> what? You're starting way up there. That's going to be a tall tree. Well, Did yeah. I say the original? But okay. Remember, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. We just, we just yeah. talked about it's got to go up into the sky a little bit. Now be careful. If you put your pinky, uh, like I like to put my pinky on the canvas a lot of times to have control, make sure you don't have paint on your finger. I've seen that happen. I've done it. You've probably done it. Yeah. You go to get paint off your palette and you don't realize you got a little bit on your finger and then you put it right there and it's like, anyway. So just going to start with the very top. And I'd like, you got to leave a little bit of the top. You know, that's the top of the tree. And I'm just going to start. It's windy up there. Yeah. And well, there's and lots it's growing. of broken tree branches. It's growing, too. I'm just going to start working my way. What made you decide to use a smaller brush for this big tall Just the top. Oh, just for the top. Okay. Yep, because you want to have a little bit more control at the top mm -hmm. because these are younger, smaller branches as the tree grows. Mm -hmm. These branches then become bigger and keep growing as the tree keeps growing, so they get bigger. And when we start to get down, maybe about... Working my way back to you, tree. <laughs> when we start to get down, maybe about two inches or so, you've got a couple options. You can go with the number eight, um, but reality is the eight and the four aren't that much different. The four is underused. Yeah, I like using the four a lot. Four and eight, actually, are my two favorite. When I get down into this range, where we're getting down to the point where we're having to work hard to get the eight to get branches, having to do a lot of brush work, time to bring out the big brush. And I'm going to slide this up a little bit. But it's the same concept, same technique, 
we're just using the big brush now. And if I zoom out, you can see how much, how clumpy and gloppy this is. When I zoom out, you can see it's, you can see the branches. You can see the individual shapes. You can squint at your painting and look and see, can I see the individual branches or is it just a blob? And if you can't see the individual branches, just make them a little bit broader leave a little bit more gap. I mean, like this is a, almost a half inch gap between these two branches. That's fine. Now, the other thing is, is people have a tendency of stopping short of the edge and leaving a gap. You know, mind that gap. It's going all the way off. Don't worry about painting over the trees behind it because this tree isn't going to step aside just because there's a tree in front or that there's a tree behind it. And this guy's going to feel like it comes all the way down into here. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint them all the way down. Paint them all the way down. And then this color is just going to fade out into our foreground. Who's got big plans for the weekend? Me. Anyone? 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 We, uh... Hayden likes to go to the Oregon Rail Heritage Museum for his birthday every year because trains are his his thing. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> so there's my there's that tree. Hey, I got a little bit like the tree didn't keep getting bigger, so I need to Mine didn't either. It looks weird. Just kind of make it a little bit broader. That's better. You want to come in and add a, a trunk if you've got some gaps. Oh, Pride in Newport. That'll be fun. Is it like a big festival? Kind of like they do here? I didn't know they did it this time of year. That's cool. Going to see my Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. Oh my gosh. Did you know that there's a third one? Mm -mm. I saw the trailer for it. I haven't even they, seen the second one, I don't so think. They all so good still. Wasn't there a TV show? I don't know. That was, we loved that movie. We bought it on DVD when it came out. And it was made for like $5 million. And I just thought it was so good. It was a good movie. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I reference it sometimes. Do you use Windex? <laughs> that, but you know, the second one wasn't super great. Um, it just didn't hit like the first one did, but the third one, I think they're going to Greece, it looked like. It might look I like think that is what fun. they're doing, mm -hmm. but now they mention it. So I'm looking at my painting and I'm going, okay. Oh, so wait a minute. I'm just reading this. Uh, the Pride thing in Newport, uh, haven't been before, but there's a fun fair drag bingo, a dance and a 5K. There's a drag bingo out here that we've always wanted to go to that Poison Waters does. Mm-hmm at one of the breweries downtown. Oh my gosh, you're gonna have so much fun. That'll be a blast. Okay. Um, yeah, Jenny has become friends with a drag queen that's pretty popular in Portland, kind of peripherally. She knows you, you know her. <laughs> um, so my painting, I feel like this is still pretty light up in here. And if you feel like yours is that way and you feel like maybe you wanna add a couple more of these kind of like ghost trees we'll call them feel free to do that but kind of that's kind of like one of those like look at your own painting decide if it's necessary um you know it's kind of becomes the tinker part tinker of painting so if you wanted to add another one <laughs> that'll be really fun i'm kind of jealous i think that would be super cool The bingo. I love bingo. I think bing bingo is super fun. Greta, we need to go to drag bingo. <laughs> and it's all ages. It's at Rogue Brewing. In Portland? Mm hmm And there's like sometimes a, a brunch. Well, I wonder if it's at drag at the Rogue Brewing in Newport, because that's where their main... Oh, is it? Yeah, you're right. 
There is a big rogue brewery. We that is their main ago. brewery. Yeah, is that where it's at, Joanna? The um, rogue brewery that's under the bridge there by the science center? Maybe. I don't know. We could do drag bingo anywhere. <laughs> anyway, so I just added a couple little more ghost trees. It just kind of felt like it needed them. You guys can do it. Do I get the hiccups? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hiccups and the burps. As long as I don't projectiles, projectile <laughs> sneeze like I did with the monster earlier, man. I now see Janice in the palette from the Muppets. Um, the blue looks like her oh, eyes. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. I'm trying to see it. Oh, it's because of the lips. And yes. She, she was the bass player in the band. She was fly. I liked her. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I want mm -hmm. to... It's at the senior center, but there's a party at Rogue. Nice. Rogue is pretty fun. If you yeah. haven't been there, it's neat. All right. So we're going to add some rocks and stuff in down here first, next. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and add some brighter highlights. We don't want to get too bright with our highlights because we don't want it to... We want it to be hinting at fall, but not like, hey, it's fall. And we don't want it really competing with that too much. Mm -mm. But it can balance it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I want to add some like boulder rocks ah. down in the water. Having computer issues, if I lose chat, we're still watching MTV. Okay. Awesome. So shout okay. out to Mark. Shout out to Kim. <laughs> the uh, the TV trick is working for you. I take it. Good. Yeah. Okay. So basically, what I want to do is I'm just going to add some. This is going to be a kind of a multi-step process. I have this technique that I use that I want to do um, a deep dive on it. You know which one I'm talking about, the uh, where the water is really starting to break up into rocks and stuff, and I started using it really close to the end of Van Gogh. Mm. Um, Maybe. Yeah. But I will do it, and I actually feel like we need to do, like, I've thrown it in elements of water paintings, and I feel like it needs to be, like, the primary focus of a painting. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's really as easy from a technique standpoint, but a little bit difficult for people to wrap their heads around. So these mounds just they need to be flat on the bottom. Yeah, fairly flat on the bottom. It's not real vital, but mostly these are rocks, so they can be a little bit more distinctive in shape. <laughs> ah, Daniel says. He just created a logo for himself, and the AI used mountains in the background. It's a sign. Nice. It's reading your brain waves. <laughs> it has been so long since I've been to the mountains. Paul um, got a new AI. Well, we got a new AI feature on one of our Adobe programs, and he spent like all day making Shiba Inu AIs and and. Uh, Sasquatch? <laughs> Sasquatch, uh, Sasquatch doing yoga in a field. <laughs> like, it was, like, my favorite thing. You can just type in anything, and it will generate it. It's actually pretty weird how accurate a lot of it is. And then some of it's just like, what? That's what you think that looks like? <laughs> yeah, some of it's pretty hokey. The weird thing is, it's like, you, you can't use it for anything. <laughs> you can use it for personal use, but you can't. You, like, I, we couldn't do, like, graphics for the website with it. Yeah. And um, Why did they put it on there? Just for fun, then? Yeah. Well, a lot of people use it. Like, you could use it on your Facebook page. And, as long as you're not making money off of it. Although, there's some rulings now that says they can't copyright. Oh, that's right. I heard of... Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that recently. Yeah. So, I've just kind of added some harshness to that right now we're going to come back in and we're going to soften it up we're going to add some more water um because really it's like let me just show you we'll we'll get into this we'll do it on another painting but i'm just going to take some black and really kind of blacken up that edge there you guys don't need to do this i'm just going to show you this technique it works really well um, but while this dries, we want that to dry because we don't want it mixing um, with what the other stuff we're doing. So we're going to work on some other little 
<clears throat> key little elements. I am going to zoom in. I'm going to go with my number four. You could use your smallest brush. It just kind of depends. I, I'm happy with using either, but I don't, you know, I, the brush just does, I don't worry about what it's supposed to do, and I just do what I want to do with it. Um, but I'm just going to take a little bit of the yellow ochre, just a little tiny bit. I don't need that much. Mm. Daniel says if you do ultra-realistic, it looks better. And maybe I got a little bit too much on there. If you get too much, you can just take a little bit of magenta. Did you use um, honey mustard? Honey mustard. <laughs> but the key on getting this to look right, and I think this is, this is something people kind of struggle with, is dabbing. Moving the brush a lot. I'm going to take a little bit more of this. And rather than just like brushing, just dab. Can you play your bingo? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dabbing all the things. Something like that. <laughs> the nice thing is that you get too carried away. You feel like maybe that's too bright. You can always come back, lighten it up. That's one of the nice things about painting over black is you can paint back over it and do it again. Whereas if you paint it over the background, it's harder to go back and, oh, that's where the color was on my brush. Kim says, Mark is retiring next summer, so his boss asked him for his resignation letter. He used AI and had me read it. I don't know, I didn't know it was AI. There was so much BS in the letter, I knew he couldn't have made it. It's funny, I just asked for my business. For that the, is so beyond awesome. The, uh, <laughs> the other business that we have, the pet bathing one, my website, I just added an AI chat bot. So like when people ask questions and they're like, oh, what voltage of machine should I get? And it'll say, well, what country are you in? And then it'll, they type in and it'll say, oh, well, you're gonna need this voltage machine with this plug. And <laughs> you know, it, it like, it looks it all up on the internet and gives them answers. And it's like, this is so nice. It's kind of creepy, but <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> but it's like you program it. So I can, I can say if, if people ask, you tell it, <laughs> if a customer asks how to look at the status of the order, guide them to their account page. And it, and, but do so in a cheerful manner. <laughs> like you have to program it. Like you can program it to be sarcastic. And <laughs> it's actually kind of, it's more labor intensive than you think to program it. But it's really cool. I enjoy it. Speaking of resignation letters, I just had a memory. Um, do you remember, so Paul's dad was vice president of a large chain grocery store for years. Yeah. And it was bought out by another, and the people... For those of you in Oregon, it's Fred Meyer. I'm not afraid to say It was bought it. out um, in the 90s. Yeah, it was well, in the 90s been by bought out, bought out another company, times. and they were horrible. They were absolutely horrible to all the long-standing employees who had been there forever, and... Um, Daniel's dad worked for Fred Meyer. Yeah. Well. And they, like, one of the things they would do is they would just come in and they just throw Burger King applications at all the... No. I okay, mean, you know a little better. Yeah. So one one time, uh, to all the executives, the vice presidents of this company, the executive vice president included a Burger King application in everybody's paycheck, along with a note that said, you got to up your game or this is your next destination. And so Paul's dad, he's very smart financially, and he was just, he's resigned, and he was, you know, start going to start his own business, and he did, and he ran a successful business with Paul for a long time. And do you remember we made letterhead for him, for his resignation letter? Oh, yeah. And it, we drew, like, a guy <laughs> mooning. <laughs> we, I don't like, know drew if a big butt it, on it. <laughs> I don't know if he used it, though. I highly doubt he used it, but we had fun designing that. Because you and I, we would have been... Teenagers. Like 19. <laughs> 18 or 19. Yeah, we would have been 19. <laughs> Let's design this. Yeah. Get that job. <laughs> get your resignation on there. So it ended up actually being a good thing that jerks came in to run the company. <laughs> in a lot of ways, we have a lot of things to thank that for. Yes. Like all 
all of my businesses and stuff are kind of a result of that happening. <laughs> Kroger deserved to be mooned. Yes, they did. And you know, it's just been really bad stuff. That was before Over Kroger. and that was over Kroger. and over. It, it, was, it was KKNR. I think it was, yeah, KKNR. But over and over and over, I just hear really bad things about what's going on. And now they're going to sell again. To Saudi Arabia? That's what I heard. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> That's, yeah, okay. All right. I have thoughts. <laughs> thoughts and prayers. <laughs> So we're, we're really pretty much done except for this last little bit down in the water. And I'm checking to see my black is dry enough that we can do this. So I'm going to use my number eight. I specifically want number eight. Number four is too small. I'm going to mix up a color. I mean, we can put these sky colors down here. Let's do that. Yeah, Daniel, there's uh, been news about them. Um selling to a Saudi based a company. Saudi based company. All right. So I'm I've just mixed up a little bit of pink cuz I feel like I want it because it's up here. So I want it to be down here a little bit just to balance Ooh. it. We're going off the sheet. We're going outside the box. It's a, okay. So I am just going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. Just going to add a little bit of streak. So I got to think this is good. Uh, let me go down here. This goes across pretty horizontally, so it's going to reflect fairly horizontally across here. So I'm not going to get too involved in putting it all over. Just touches here and there. Just some touches. Kim wants to know when is the best season to visit Oregon and the Pacific Northwest. Oh, I love October. Yeah, my vote would be for fall, but... Not September, October. Yeah. It's the best. It's still reasonably dry through October, but you get all the... Yeah, I think that's the best. In winter, it's a lot of rain yep. and cold. Um, but October, fall is awesome. Um, and then early summer, June is great, too. So the, the pros of going in fall is you can still get up into, like, Timberline Lodge and other areas without having to worry about snow. snow. Um, whereas if you start getting in early summer... Like, if you were to get, wanted to go to Crater Lake, remember we went to Crater Lake in June and there was still, yeah, was like, five June. feet of snow? The yeah. roads were clear, though. The roads were clear, but you can get into those areas easier in fall than spring, but you get a lot of the same benefits of weather. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, we're keeping this fairly... You're going all the way up in there. Is that okay? No, well, that's not what I said to do. I like to bend the rules. So I'm just going to streak in a little bit of this pink, kind of close to the bottom. And you can add just like a little pocket here. A little pocket there. A little dab. Little bits of pool. Now, let me zoom out a little bit further. So you can see now, okay, we're establishing that this water is a little bit wider. I'm going to pick some uh, of our sky color. I'm going to make some up here. And that might be a little too blue. It is. I don't like doing too blue because, in general, you're not going to get a lot of blue. So, <laughs> so what you want to do is, when you're doing this, is you want to move your brush side to side when you hit something that you don't want to cover, stop, go back over. So you want to create the definition of the underside of a rock, you cut underneath it. But painting this over the black, you can add all kinds of shapes. And if you go, oh, well, that rock feels like it should be a little bit wider. Okay, you add a little bit of black back on. <laughs> what? Joanne, it's Jenny, you don't seem to be, you don't seem like a rule bender, to be honest. Greta's <laughs> <laughs> over there laughing. 
I don't know, Greta. Do you think I'm a rule bender? <laughs> Shaking their head. <laughs> I am definitely not. <laughs> I am a rule follower to like we okay. Give you an idea. So when I drive home from work, there's an old defunct railroad that doesn't get oh, used. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't get used at all anymore. And there's a stop sign on the crossing. It's just this little backcountry road. The railroad track has not been used in probably 15 years. And there's a stop sign. And 90% of people just go right through. They blast right through. Just blast right I always stop because I'm like, there's still a stop sign. That means legally I still need to stop. The odds <laughs> of getting caught are zero. The odds of a train coming <laughs> are, are zero. zero. And but we're like, there's a red octagon there. But there's a stop sign, and that's <laughs> that's the law. So, and we always like yell at all the people who who don't stop. Like we're a couple of fuddy duddies. You're supposed to stop. <laughs> Look at that jerk blasting right I there. wave my arms at people that are speeding and, go, and mouth really loud. Slow down. <laughs> no, I don't do that. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my smallest brush. I'm just gonna take some pure white. And what I wanna do is I wanna kind of enhance the bottom edges. We'll start up here. So like this rock right here, you are only gonna see where the water interacts with it along the bottom and to the side. You're not gonna see the water interaction over the top. So I'm gonna start here. Mark says it. With the wrong kind of people around, he sees Jenny as a rule breaker. Yeah, that's true. That can, could be true. I could be influenced. <laughs> so I'm just That's sliding. why I have no friends at all. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> all of our friends were rule breakers. <laughs> Oops. Now, when you get up into here, you can use a little bit more of the white. Just add some little streaks. Shimmer. But again, we don't want to do white across the top of this. Maybe I do. I'm, I'll no, be a rule breaker. It, it will not look good. <laughs> I mean, there are no rules in art, but I can tell you, it won't look good. You know, I kind of disagree with that statement, too. What, which statement? That there's no rules in art? Yeah, I mean, there there are no rules in art, but there are if you want it to look good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> We're sugarcoating it for people. We are sugarcoating it. There are no rules within reason. Our old art teacher, um, Leland, would probably have a cow if he heard us say there were no rules in art. <laughs> um... There are a lot of rules. Honestly. Like, okay, so there's some art pages I belong to on Facebook, and to be honest, most of them are not worth joining at all, but, like, there was one guy that was posting his paintings, and I I don't want to be someone, like, I, I don't want to, like, throw shade on his paintings, but really what they were was... If I took all the colors on my palette... Oh, I know which one you're and talking about. just smeared them all over to make a big brown, muddy mess. That's what, <laughs> that's what was going on the canvas. And, you know, people were trying to give advice, and this guy wouldn't take it. And so I was like, well, okay, you just keep rock on with that. <laughs> I think that to some extent there are there are no rules in art, but then I also think that there are a lot of people that hide behind that statement. If you know, what I understand what I mean. It's like yeah. they, they use that statement as an excuse to not develop themselves as an artist. Yeah. Um, but okay, so one last thing we're gonna do, and this is just really quick. Look at my paper towel. Just it, it's, look at this. <laughs> it is a work of art. It's a rare shark. Rules. Test. Okay, Daniel, what do you see? Let's turn it this way. I see an owl with a green beak. I see beak. one of those aliens from Mexico. An owl with a green beak and a pink bow in its hair. Oh, that too. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to mix up like a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow ochre. You know, we didn't use the bright yellow at all. A little bit more blue. 
<laughs> and I'm just kind of making this muted kind of bluish color. You can add a little bit of magenta to it, too. Oh, Mothman. I see Mothman, oh, too. I can see that. Yeah, I oh, can see Kim Mothman. sees an owl. It's pretty fun. All right, so this kind of needs to be a little bit more on the blue. There we go. Right here. And I'm going to wipe most of that color off. And underneath these rocks. Teal. Yeah, it's like a dark teal. I'm just going to mimic them. Let me zoom in. I, I am using the zoom feature a lot tonight. So this shape, I want to kind of mimic it underneath my little reflection, or my little scribble. And you don't get, you don't want to get real precise with this. And wipe off all your paint on your brush. Yeah, use <laughs> very little paint true. on your brush. Because all you're doing is you are suggesting a little bit of reflection of these rocks. What made you choose this color? It's not a typical thing that you do. Um, well, it's in keeping with the other colors in the painting. Oh, yeah, balance it out. It keeps it balanced, and You know what? This actually would be a nice highlight color on the top of these rocks, because... Oh, yeah, if you wanted to do some highlights, you can... It could be, like, mossy rocks. Yeah, I mean, you could add a little... Uh, you could add a little bit of your bright yellow. Yeah, because the bright yellow and the black is going to turn kind of greenish. Just be good. Hang on. I just... Depends on what you want to <laughs> do. It's up to you. Poor little blob of yellow all by itself. <laughs> I see the silhouette of a woman dancing on Paul's palette. Her back is facing us. The head is towards the pink and red. So up in here, right? Her head. Oh, wait, we're zoomed out. <laughs> is this her head, Daniel? <laughs> and this is like one of her legs. You know, that would be kind of fun to do, Paul, at the end of classes if we just take an outline shapes on our palette like this. Yeah. <laughs> and be like, what do we see today? No, It'd be like reading tea leaves. <laughs> okay. So let's do this. Let's improvise. What, what are, are we, we divining at? from our palettes today? Gosh, we're closing in on two hours, Jenny. Okay. So we were afraid we weren't going to be long enough, but we are getting there. Smallest brush. A little bit of our process yellow since it's already on the palette. <laughs> you made Mark very happy using the yellow. Yeah, I mean, we don't want it to be wasteful. No. How are you guys doing on your paint, by the way? I'm curious. Yeah, we want to know like if that amount worked out good for you. Are you getting to the point where you're ready for... More Next. tubes, or do you still have some left? Or, you know, we didn't, we don't really track on. And our I'm end. gonna say this every time: unscrew this and put your paint on your palette this way because these caps are really annoying. They glue the paint like glues this shut, and you'll break your fingernails and you'll get paint all over your fingers. But if you just unscrew the the whole cap and use the little squeeze hole, it works great. <laughs> A little bit goes a long way. Zoom in so you guys can see. I got a little bit carried away up there, but you know, whatever. Pretty animal. Just little bits. If you get too much, you can always soften it up. Like I'm working in around this tree that has the Black branches, if that gets, oh, you guys can't even see it. If that gets a little bit too carried away. Nope, got some blue on my brush. It actually just added a little bit of green. Whatever, <laughs> it works. And if you end up like where I've got, kind of <laughs> lost a little bit of my branch here. Kim says she's cheap with your paint, so she has plenty. I am the exact same way. Because a lot I of times I am more like, than Jenny is. A lot of times I'm like at home when I'm working on paintings. I'm like, I don't know when I'm going to quit. Is the dog going to demand to play? Right. <laughs> and I don't want the paint to try and waste. Am like, I going to suddenly need a cup of coffee? <laughs> so to me, like, you could. <laughs> a yellow smudge looks like a face. In the yellow above the honey mustard. That one. Okay. 
<laughs> so that's that. Boo! I'm done too. How about that? Let me uh move my palette. And let's look at it compared to the original. I think we did a pretty good job. A lot more bright yellow. A little bit more bright yellow, and that's kind of like, again, if I almost feel Smaller, like Smaller, further back waterfall. Yeah, I, think, I feel like I did a little bit too much of the bright yellow, but just, you know, everybody's going to have their own personal preference in that regard. Um, a little bit brighter of a painting overall. Look how the horizons line up. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, you, know, you remember the story of coming up with date night, right? I don't remember. So we used to do date nights where it would be two canvases and one person would do one side and the other person would do the other side and it would be one painting. It's called a diptych. And when I came up with the idea for it, doing it that way, is I would, we were doing a painting of Crater Lake. And I looked over and I saw the row of four people and all of their mountains flowed together all the way across. And it wasn't something they did on purpose, but when you're working on a painting that's this far away from your neighbor, you subconsciously line things up. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, we should start doing diptychs and call it date night. Your first date night was Diamond Head at Oahu. Is that the first one? Mm -hmm. Wow. So let's see how Jenny did. Let's see if hers lined up. We have done a couple of, it lines up almost exactly. Wow. <laughs> Whoa, we've got a triptych. Da, da, da. A lot of waterfalls in this part. Anyway. Good yeah, job, Jenny. I like yours. Yeah, I actually ended up being happy with it. Yeah. I like the little tendrils of the clouds. This um, is so from a Maybe light, a little heavy weight. I would on the top. not automatically look at this and say Jenny painted this. <laughs> it, it it's rougher than It doesn't than have you. stars or little fuzzy things. It's rougher than you usual paint. Usually. I tried to, that's one of the things I've been working on when I do your paintings, rather than like going off and doing my own thing, I really want to like practice using less paint. And that's why I was like, show me how much paint you have on your brush. Because I think it's good for me to do that, to be able to loosen up more when I want to loosen up more. My I'll trees be, at the top are maybe a little too... We should do a date. Yeah, we should. And because we've done date night paintings in this, you know, on GoBox, but it's usually just one of us doing mm -hmm. the whole painting. But mm -hmm. we should actually do one where we Thank do you guys. it together. <laughs> so I I did like how the clouds oh, turned out. Leg cramp. <laughs> you need magnesium. I do. <laughs> um, I like your water better. I think, um, just a little more expansive. I like the. I actually like shimmer. my water in the original one better. Oh, yeah, that's good. A little bit looser. Mine maybe looks a little too planned out, like too perfectly zigzag, each zigzag the exact width. I think width. if yours had just gone a little bit wider, mm -hmm. would have been fixed a lot of that. Yeah. But let's bring it back. <laughs> oh, we, Mark would like a date night. <laughs> yeah. Or Kim would like it because it would force Mark to paint. <laughs> yeah. But we should do that. And then you know, like we can, we just have to set the camera up so it's centered between us. And... Is it his painting wrist that's broken though? <laughs> I will tell you that date nights work a lot better if one person's left-handed and the other person's right-handed. Well, yeah, absolutely. Because we've done that before mm -hmm. in live settings where mm -hmm. uh, we did the what, the Portland chicken and the rooster, or, or no, the foxes, too, where we've actually painted the diptych painting, which when I say it's a diptych, it's one painting it's just spread over two canvases. So we usually would try to have a focal point like the waterfall would be on this side and the sun would be on this side or something like that um, so that each person has something that's a bit of a focal point so the paintings actually kind of stand alone but then they work best together but we've actually painted those in person before and it's always fun ah. to do oh kim's a lefty and mark's a righty See, and he broke his works. left wrist yep so that, yeah that that's i didn't know that you were a lefty some of the because paul and i are both right-handed i always wonder like some of the things are a little harder, I've, I think, but for left-handed people. But I've done paintings left-handed, though, too. Yeah, but you don't teach them left-handed now. No, but, but when we've done those date nights, I've done it. Yeah. I actually taught. I had a really obnoxious group come in for a birthday party, and they insisted on sitting on the side of the studio that would have been behind my back. <laughs> so you painted left-handed. So left -handed. I painted left-handed, just 
because I was irritated. Sure. Yeah, it was fun. All right, let's bring it back. We're back. We're back. And We're back to say goodbye. <laughs> We're back to next, say uh, goodbye. Let's see. Next painting session is Friday the 13th in October. It's the cat? Yep. The next live one, anyway. We'll have a couple videos come out. Ooh. At least one video come out before then. So, yeah, this is what we'll be painting. Actually, color-wise, it works, it works well with our... <laughs> color-wise, yes. Style-wise, completely different look. <laughs> so, and, uh, yeah, we should have... Uh, <coughs> we should... Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, the fall box, or winter box, we'll call it. I'm calling it the burr box, because it's burr October, box. November, December. The burr box. Yeah, that makes sense. B E R box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. Yeah, so that'll um, be shipping out the first week of October. Yep. And for those of you on Amazon, we cut off the month to month. So you either got to resubscribe on Amazon for the three month, or you can subscribe on our website. Yeah. Go box, and you, then you can do the month to month payment plan that way. Yeah. Um, it's just getting too hard to try to track the mm -hmm. two different. It was really hard, yeah. It was a mess. So, anyway, uh, that's all we got for tonight. Yeah. We'll see you guys later. You want to come say hi, Greta? <laughs> the panic shaking She's of the like, head. No. <laughs> Greta says hi, but in spirit only. <laughs> in spirit only. <laughs> oh, thank you. Happy birthday to Hayden. Hope you'll, yes. We will have a wonderful day. He's, he's such a good boy. He's, and our weather is changing this weekend. It? We're going back to fall weather. It's yeah. supposed to rain all week. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, All right. Uh, let's get out. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Thank you again for all your support, and uh, let's keep in touch on Facebook. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>